how do you ensure when presenting to a diverse group that you're honoring the various cultural norms and etiquettes of the people in the audience? Oh, excellent question, Kerry. Here's how I look at it, right? The purpose of communication is connecting with people. It's to build rapport, to find common ground. So, um, well, there's a number of, number of techniques that I use, but let's start at the beginning, right? The very first time you're actually addressing this group, like Elizabeth said, you might really not know much about, you know, the various cultures that are um, represented in that group, but you have a general idea. You have a general idea, and there's those surface culture pieces that, you know, hopefully you've done your homework. You know who's in the audience, like you said in the beginning, you know which countries they're from, you know, it's just a few things. So when addressing such a multicultural group, I find it very effective to start off with finding that common ground, right? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because you know that they are in different time zones. I've gotten to so many meetings where people have come and said, good morning, when it's actually 10 p.m. for me, right? And it's immediately a little discordant. So mm -hmm. just to avoid those little things that you know people don't think about. So start off with a more generic and a more personal um, and, and give a more personal greeting. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is knowing that there are multiple language groups represented in my audience, you know, start off with a hi, hello, hola, bonjour, namaste, right? Which basically, again, talks to individuals because people love to hear the language that they are comfortable with. They just love it. Yeah. And immediately, without knowing these people in the audience, you're building connections with them. Mm -hmm. They put up, they want to listen, they, they feel like you're speaking with them one-on-one, -on -one, which is really hard to do in a large group, even in person. And yeah even more difficult to do on a virtual session, right? Yeah. These little techniques, right off the bat, I'm acknowledging and honoring the diversity in the audience. The other thing that I like to do is maintain etiquette, right? I think it is better to err on the side of formality rather mm -hmm. than they're too casual because you could potentially offend people by yeah. being a bit too casual. Now, there are certain uh, cultures where it's okay to be casual, where it's expected to be casual, to be mm -hmm. free. But there are certain cultures where it's an absolute no-no. So when you have a diverse group, it's better to be more formal than casual, right? Because I don't think anyone can take offense to you wearing a suit and talking, you know, in a, in a more formal way uh, yeah. than in... Um, like Elizabeth said, you know, I avoid slang all the way, you know, because again, it can be confusing to those who don't understand the uh, reference, or it might be downright offensive to some cultures, right? And, um, you know, be careful with humor, be careful with irony, because, you know, while it definitely has a place, I mean, I, I love to start off my talks with a little joke, right, to get people comfortable and laughing. But when you're talking to a diverse audience, that's a tricky thing. So I yeah. would be very careful with humor. Because think about it like this, you know, it's unlikely that you will joke in the same way with your boss as you would with your family and friends, right? So just knowing that there are different um, circumstances involved and therefore, you know, you don't know what's appropriate and what's not, so stay away. Um, those would be some of the tips that I would use to honor cultural etiquette and norms. Uh, excellent. And again, so accessible and practical things that we can all do that can make a big difference. Elizabeth, you were holding up your hand. I was yeah. just going to say that Rajani's comment about uh, being dressed well, if you know who your audience is and what the expectation is, more or less, uh, maybe it's the industry expectation where Silicon Valley is multilingual, but mostly very casual. Um, I live in the Tyrol of Austria where it's very casual and everyone's wearing sporting clothes. But if I'm speaking in Vienna, I'm going to be formal. There's a rule of thumb that often works, which is you should be dressed in the same style as your audience, but one notch better if you're the presenter. Mm -hmm. And that's an easy way to understand. I would not wear a three-piece suit in Australia, for instance. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. If I can add to that, uh, I have a funny story actually to share. Um, 
so in my in my role at work um you know this is a few years ago now like you said elizabeth everybody wears jeans and sweatshirts here in the valley uh, but a few years ago it was a little different right people were still wearing suits and i owned a whole wardrobe of suits and i don't have that many today but anyway so i was working i you know i was used to working with the fortune 50 companies um you know the big blue the, <laughs> the you know there's a lot of where you you know you people wore white button down shirts and pinstripes and all of that and so i was very uh, used to wearing suits to work um i got invited to a meeting with a unicorn uh, that since went public and is in the ride share and the eats business define unicorn <laughs> for us please <laughs> you didn't go to the stable no, no, no. Um, it's a startup with a billion dollar valuation. So it's, um, yeah. Um, so I got invited by this young startup who, who since gone public. Um, and I went in the clothes that I was used to wearing to meetings, right? I went in my suit and my high heels and I go to this meeting and it was a, it was a two day workshop um, in Colombia. And I actually went there, and my, my bag was filled with suits and high heels, and I show up and everybody's wearing jeans and ripped jeans and, you know, t-shirts and I'm sticking Great. out like a sore thumb, right? <laughs> I mean, to Elizabeth, to your point about being dressed one notch better than uh, the folks there, I should have been in jeans that were not ripped right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I was in my suits. I actually had to go shopping. I actually went shopping that evening um, to the local mall and I picked up more appropriate clothes. So um, yeah, knowing your audience and, you know, kind of presenting and presentation is not just verbal presentation. It's also the way you look, the way you act, your verbal and non-verbal uh, cues, all of that is part of the presentation uh, of philosophy so just wanted to share that <laughs> great example in the reverse right uh and i'm sure we all have those stories that we learn from firsthand experience and don't make the mistake again 